Okay, we're back live here in San Francisco. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out the events, extract the signal from the noise. We're here with General EE's Industrial Cloud event in San Francisco. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Leo Spiegel is here. He's the Senior Vice President of Strategy and Corp Development at Pivotal. Uh, Leo, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thanks, great to be here. That's an interesting title given the dynamics of what's happened <laughs> with Pivotal. I mean, obviously we've been following the, the evolution, you know, this is our fourth season of theCUBE and we were, have been at every EMC world, we've been at every VM world <laughs> since, and just the evolution of, of Paul Moritz's vision has transformed you know, the industry and people are, are making moves. And you were been involved kind of behind the curtain, you know, pushing buttons for the Pivotal uh, spin out or what, they, what did they call it, spin out or uh, what was it? What was well, the initially it was the initiative. The initiative yeah, and, and now we're a independent company. And you've been involved in some of the biz on the M&A side uh -huh. and, and kind of putting that, uh, these those ingredients together. So um, tell us a little bit about that and then connect it to where we are today because now GE comes into the picture, which you were also involved in that relationship. Yes, so, absolutely. Um, you can almost see the dots connecting. Yeah, well, so you know, well, I think I, you know. First, I, I have such admiration and respect for for Paul and for Joe Tucci and guys like David Goulden. I mean, I, I think they really have a vision of, you know, where the market's going. And you know, when they acquired Greenplum, you know, I think they really understood that you know the world was was going to go way beyond just sort of storage, mm. and that you really needed to enable the whole vertical solution up to the to the application. And so we've been on this journey. I, I, that's sort of where I got involved because I was the original investor in Greenplum. And I uh, always joke, Scott Yara, I was his first boss, and I've, I've worked very close. I hired Bill Cook, who is now the COO of Pivotal. So I've, I've worked in and around the company for a very long time. And, and uh, when we became part of EMC, you know, we realized that we needed to expand our capabilities. And so I think a really pivotal, no pun intended, acquisition we made was the acquisition of Pivotal Labs. And Labs really enabled us to, uh, you know, have the, the, the people who could build solutions on top of our database platform. And, and then as you know, uh, you know, mid last year, inside of EMC and VMware, with really Paul's vision, um, we decided to create Pivotal. And you know, Pivotal was a combination of assets that came from uh, EMC and VMware, and, uh, and we launched the company uh, April 1st of this year. It was a very complicated transaction, just quickly, because um, you know, these assets all had to be valued fairly. They had to be put into an entity. We had to move employees all over the world, yeah. and so it's, there was a lot of stuff, a lot of hard Figuring out what goes where. Yeah, and how yeah. to price it and mm -hmm. do it fairly, and lots of the bankers and lawyers, and a lot of people <laughs> <makes> fun. <laughs> <laughs> of, as Dave said, there's one lawyer, and no one's making any money, there's two, everyone's, everyone's wealthy, right? <laughs> so a lot of fees Absolutely, a lot of fees. <laughs> a lot of fees. No, but, but in general, the employees are very happy. There's no real um, negative sentiment amongst the employee base. You got options on both companies. You guys really did a, a big startup move there was uh, great. So, given your perspective, obviously you, you know your history uh, with Sandpiper in the early days of the web. You had to build out the plumbing back then. That was the early days of the stack. We were referring to some of this industrial internet or industrial cloud as mm -hmm. 1991, like we're in the early 90s, and yep. we're arguing over you know you know x uh, 802 dot whatever or token ring Ethernet, and yep. the stack above us is is uh, unconquered yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, or the information superhighway that was predating the web. So we're in that kind of mode now with this GE thing. So how do you view that? Because you have a perspective of the history and doing the corp dev, you got to be plugged into that 20 mile stair. So share with us this industrial revolution around the industrial cloud. Well, you know, it, it's, it, I, you know, I think it really, for me, it, it started with the sensors, right? I mean, I think if you think about what's been happening in the industrial world, you know, you started with these devices, whether it was a jet engine or a turbine, and, and then you were able to add these sensors onto these devices. And then, you know, all these sensors, <laughs> it's sort of like ET, they started to report home, right? <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, you need a platform where you're going to get all this information from these sensors and devices mm -hmm. and, and do things. You right. know, whether it's figure out a jet engine's not happy or, you know, figure out how to optimize a power plant. plant and, and so, in, in a lot of ways, um, you know, I, I think the ironic thing, for me at least, is that it was sort of the consumer companies that proved scale, right? So I think we all understood that you could collect this data. But I think the real challenge was, could you build a platform that could keep up with the velocity of data? And could you make you know, real-time decisions that could really enable 
businesses to do things like shut down a power plant if there's a problem or take a jet out of, you know, sort of a flight or whatever because it had a problem. And, and I think really with the proof from, you know, companies like Google and Facebook and others and the work that, you know, really we've done at Pivotal around, you know, our database technologies and our Hadoop technologies and the analytics we've built on top of it, you know, I think all those things have, have come together to, to really give companies like GE you know, the, the conviction to really take to market a next generation of applications. And, you know, I was just up at lunch here at this event talking with some of the GE customers, and I mean, they're psyched. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, for them, this is this is real dollar. It's a modernization. Right? It's like modernizing the, the baseball field. It's like, you know, <laughs> the, old, the old park in San Francisco, now you got the re revitalization. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I think they think they can dramatically change their business models. And, you know, we've all seen these trends, right? Yeah, From, yeah. to your point, token ring versus ethernet, or, you know, the mini and the mainframe. I mean, we're at that point point now, it's really exciting, I yeah. think. So take us back to, yeah. to your Greenplum investment, because back then there was no such thing as big data, at least nobody called it yeah. that. Um, so in, in, in essentially what, was it the early part, middle part of the last decade, really, yeah. right? And yeah. so here you've got this sort of new type of, of database, uh, did you have any inkling that it would become, you know, insert itself into this new data trend. I mean, obviously you saw data is up and to the right, but talk about that a little bit. What was yeah, your I mean, that's <laughs> someday over a beer, I'll tell you the long <laughs> and interesting story about <laughs> Green Plum, because like all startups, it, it, it wasn't <laughs> anywhere near linear. But, you know, when, when Scott came to us and said, look, um, you know, the world is changing, and the amount of data that people are creating is mind-boggling, and, you know, people are tired of the forklift mentality of databases, you know, like, you know, buy Teradata, <coughs> you know, spend tens of millions of dollars, spend millions of dollars a year on maintenance. You know, I have a way to do that software only and really, you know, have better performance and just unbelievable cost advantage. I mean, you know, we, we really saw that as a big, big opportunity. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like everything in the venture business, you're betting on people. And so we had a lot of faith in Scott and Luke Longren and, you know, and some of the technologists behind it. But for me, you know, I, I did see it as the beginning of a long evolution because I think what's different today, at least, I, you know, I'm, I always joke, I started my first company when I was in college. You know, I was in the system integration business. I automated Morgan Stanley and Merrill Lynch and, you know, put in Windows systems and, you know, back many, many years ago. NT it, or? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I started with Novell and then went to NT and, you know. Yeah. And, you know I, and went back to Novell again. Yeah, I remember, <laughs> remember Synoptics and I know you, you guys know, right? Yeah, so, yeah, I sure. mean. Frank Cartelli would be proud exactly <laughs> but, but the thing that's different today or was was changing back then and we, we see today was the importance of the data right it, it used to be everyone focused on like the application logic like you know could I do an expense report or could I build a general ledger but what was happening at the beginning of Greenplum was really like what does this data mean mm -hmm. and what can I do with it and that's really kind of the, the vision and the road we've been on and I think with technologies you know like Hadoop and you know gem fire and SQL fire for real time with all these technologies coming together in our platform you know I, I do think we're uniquely positioned to help companies really take advantage of the meaning of their data and translate that into real value in their business models. And it seems like we're entering this new phase which is what does this data mean and how can I act on it in real time with machines. Yeah. And that what we heard today is a whole new wave of value creation that's coming. That's got to be exciting. Yeah, really exciting. I mean, we you know, when we had the uh, you know, one of the first technical diligence meetings with GE, and we can talk a little bit about that, the transaction, but you know, you can imagine kind of our geek heads and the GE geek heads getting together, and you know, Paul was there, who I always joke, he's the ultimate geek head, and, and you know, they're all talking about just the number of transactions and the velocity, and you know, kind of looking in our eyes and saying, can you really do it? I mean, can you really build systems at this scale? Because that's the unique thing about the GE solution is, I mean, the amount of data and the velocity of the data. I mean, it may be different than the amount of data that a Google accumulates over a long period of time, but the decisions one needs to make instantaneously on that velocity of data is a really unique solution that we think is going to be exciting to build. So let's talk about the deal, because you guys, you know, <laughs> again, you got to love Tucci and Gould and Moritz, spinning out this new company. You got, you know, they, they put forth at the financial analyst meeting, hey, at some point we'd like to do an IPO. We got a lot of work to do, but market went crazy that day and a down day, by mm -hmm. the way. Um, and so here you have GE, you know, the industrial company saying, wow, we want in. Yeah. And now you've announced uh, that you'll do $300 million roughly this year with Pivotal. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, 3x revenue valuation, that's, that's pretty conservative, believe it or not, in this day and age, in this yeah. day of the big, big data bubble. So that's a pretty good valuation for GE. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean basically, <laughs> you, know, you know, without <laughs> going into all the, the gory details, I mean, you know, we- Well, we were speculating <laughs> on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, you know, we, we did a, a, you know, a, a, a valuation, and you know, we valued all those assets, put them into Pivotal, and you know, I think that, you know, you know, EMC, to their credit, was very focused on doing the right thing for all shareholders, because as we know, EMC owns 80% of VMware, so there are other minority shareholders. So, I you know, I think it was really done, you know, to create, you know, value for everybody. And, you know, the GE opportunity and, and GE as a partner for us is so strategic that, in effect, they invested at the same valuation that EMC continues to invest in and VMware continues to invest in. Right, well, so so I used to call them misfit toys when they were part of, you know, VMware and, and EMC. Pat Gelsinger doesn't like when I say that, but nonetheless, it sort of didn't really fit. Talk about how they do fit now in, in Pivotal, um, whether it's Cloud Foundry or Greenplum Cetus. or Pivotal Labs, Cetus. I mean, yeah, so I mean, so, so basically the, the, the key set of technologies that came together to create Pivotal, obviously came from EMC and came from VMware. Mm -hmm. On the EMC side, you know, the, it was primarily Greenplum, and it was Pivotal Labs. Right. And then, you know, we made a very small acquisition late last year called More VRP from a company in Israel, um, which is a console technology management technology. On the VMware side, you know, it was Cloud Foundry, it was all the vFabric Spring technologies, yep. it was Cetus, which is an analytics framework. And so, what was the company you mentioned just from Israel? That, uh, 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 more VRP. That was on the EMC, did that? That was on the EMC side, yeah. So we that's still in the Viper, right? Powering the vi a lot of the Viper stuff? Uh, it's actually working on our, it's really to oh, okay. it's power, it's pivotal. Yeah, it's power oh. the Greenplum database. Got so, it. Okay, got one of the things we wanted to do was, uh, they have very unique technology that allows you real time to manage the database. So if your memory allocation's not right or you have storage resource allocation issues, the more VRP technology on the fly will change that resource to ensure the system operates at peak performance. Yeah. So so those were the, the, and it was a relatively small acquisition. So those were the sort of the assets from the EMC side and again on the VMware side, it was the Cloud Foundry technology, vFabric Spring technologies, the Gemfire SQL technologies, and then the Cetus technologies. And so, you know, pulling all those technologies together and you know sort of building the team and moving the employees was really the exercise that that we went through and that comprises the pivotal platform yes and so and you know with the you know the genius of Scott Yara and uh -huh. Paul Moritz and Rob Me and you know a whole bunch of amazing, I mean we have just an amazing bench as you know of mm. talented engineers and so I think we're very blessed. But we've now you know announced Pivotal One, which is a framework which takes all those technologies and will provide to the customer a uniform way to acquire the technology and it's, it's very much as you'd expect, uh, a core set of technologies with sort of the data component to it and then the PaaS, platform as a service component for building applications and then we'll enable a set of services on top of it and we're talking to a variety of companies who, you know, in effect want to use that platform yeah. to build services on top of it and so we think we can be that layer, if yeah. you will, above the cloud. And as you know, one of the things that we think is really important is choice. And so we're sort of cloud agnostic. So you know we'll work with Amazon and we'll work with OpenStack and we'll work with a variety of, of cloud platforms. And the customer can move their application from cloud to cloud by le using our layer in between, basically. Leo, yeah, we we are impressed with uh, EMC and mm -hmm. VMware. You know, Joe Tucci, Gould. We've interviewed all of them. Um, and you got on the uh, Maritz side, Gelsinger. I mean, these guys are, are awesome. They know their tech and they're, they're geeks and they're alpha geeks. But one thing that that really impresses me the most of all, just that's just cool, but what's really impressive is that they are great at go-to-market, and they're great at competing, right? So they'll, they're will they very customer-centric. So I got to ask you to go to market with, with GE. I mean, this is a good deal. They pay $100 million. You get a market lift. 105. 100, okay. <laughs> 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 but who's counting? Well, they count the fees. <laughs> and, yeah, 105. Yeah, it's, and, it's, and they get a nice deal because they get a good position, and yeah, you guys kind of- 10% of the company. Valuation's low, given what they could be, given mm -hmm. the built-in revenue run rate. Sure. Um, and you got a great team, so team, product, market fit, but they open up that world for you. So, <coughs> obviously from a biz dev standpoint, corporate development, you have a new market space. How are they attacking that? Are they going to go, uh, total partnership with GE? Is there going to be any derivative products, joint products? How is that relationship going to evolve? So, it, you know, I, it will be announced over the coming months, so I'm not going to pre-announce <laughs> anything, but at a, at a <laughs> high level. You're smiling, I joint <laughs> products. <laughs> <laughs> but, at a, but at a high <laughs> level, I mean, I think we're very committed to uh, deep technology integration and deep go-to-market integration. 
and you know it'll it'll be leveraging you know GE resources on the go-to-market side with Pivotal resources with EMC resources and VMware resources and you know and, and you know today you can imagine that GE is a, a large customer to EMC a large customer to VMware and a large customer to Pivotal and so we'll continue to leverage all those relationships. But you know, I think what's exciting is that it's transformed itself from what you'd consider a customer relationship to really a partner relationship. And, and they'll, they'll leverage our platform in their, in their which is really what you know, Bill Rue talked about today, is they're going to leverage our platform as, as a, a core piece of the solutions or products they take to market. And you guys, as early adopters, I want to say early adopters, but it's an emerging market, is what Pivotal's doing, essentially the top of the stack of VMware, kind of put out and, and focused. I mean, to me, we've always loved Maritz's original vision to, at, in 2010 when he came on, the, when we had the cube there. The top of the stack was all playing out, but you had all too much stuff going on in the middle of the data layer. So this is essentially a spin out, but it's still emerging. So you have a go-to-market emerging deal with GE. So I think one, that's that's compelling. And it gives you guys thought leadership because the Internet of Things has been kind of kicked around since 2001 when, when wireless probes were, were out sitting in the network. But since then, you've seen the, 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 the sensors, the probes, the now moving into the industrial. So it's a, it's a complete early game. Mm -hmm. So how are you guys going to organize internally given that there might be a new partner out there, and he's exclusive to GE, you have uh, potentially other partners? Yeah, I mean, you know, this is, you know, we're, there's no exclusivity in our relationship either way. I mean, you know, GE will partner with the companies that it needs to partner with to be successful, and, and Pivotal will do the same. I mean, you know, we, we have, you know, lots of companies in the industrial space who work with EMC and VMware and Pivotal, and, you know, we'll, we'll continue to work with them. I, I think the, you know, if you heard, you know, today's session, you know, a lot was talked about around you know standards and open source and you know if this thing is as big as it can be and if we make it as big as it should be you know we're going to have to all embrace cooperation and that's kind of how we've grown this industry you guys have yeah. been in it a long time right yeah. it's yeah. You, you, you just can't be well, you know sort of you've been in very you've been, you've been very entrepreneurial so i got to ask you the entrepreneurial question there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there watching and we'll watch the, the reruns and watch, read the blog posts and the research they want to know where the white spaces are so enable them point them give some navigation around what where they should be focusing. If I'm a developer, I'm an entrepreneur, Internet of Things, industrial cloud, and just commercial enterprise, open source, where's the white space? Well, I, I, you know, I, I, what keeps me excited, I mean, one of the dimensions is you think about it, I mean, the number of mobile devices relative to laptops, right? I mean, they're growing exponentially. So I, I think anything in and around mobile and mobile in the enterprise is really exciting. I mean, I just look at how today, you know, even at EMC, how easy it is for me to integrate my iPhone into the EMC system, right? And you know, and it's just beginning. So I think that's a great area for entrepreneurs to focus on is mobile. You know, I still think there's a lot to do around, you know, the heavy duty manipulation and crunching of data. So I think there's some interesting areas there that you know entrepreneurs can sort of focus on, and then the applications, right? I mean, you know, I was at lunch, and you know, it's sort of funny. I mean, you know, I don't know if, if you were starting a company today, would you buy an ERP system? <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> I mean, way. you know, you know, would you buy an HR system? You know, or would you just use? Would you buy Oracle? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think those are the fundamental questions, right? I mean, you know, I think if you were doing it today, you'd use a SaaS-based HR yeah, system. You yeah. use a SaaS-based ERP system. So I mean, w that goes. Forever, yeah. right? I mean, there yeah. are so many applications that I think people can jump on, and it, it makes perfect sense. I mean, why own it when you can use it and have someone else manage it and operate it? I mean, it's, you know, you focus on your core competency. So it's sort of like that whole outsourcing thing we lived through in the past, but it's just happening at the application layer now. What's the capital markets like in Silicon Valley right now or in, in, in the VC world, early stage kind of, and then growth growth companies? Is, is it robust? Is it bubbly? Is it, con is it uh, constricting? What do you see? <laughs> it, 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 it's bumpy. I mean, I, I think early stage is tough. I mean, I think, I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting, the hyper, hyper early, you know, sort of all of these incubators, you know, going out and getting 50 grand or 250,000, no problem. You know, closing a five or eight or $9 million Series A, tough. You know, I think B rounds, even tougher. But I think if you can get to a scalable business model and you can demonstrate traction, unlimited money. Yeah. So where the market is hot right now is on the late stage and on the really, really, so, really so early stage, value. but the middle is challenging. Yeah, so I you think. have to have proof points. So you know, one of the things that you guys do here uh, in this panel, I, I tweeted about and also mentioned when uh, uh, Bill was on, was you know it's all about you know all the buzz around emerging, futuristic, very tech involved. Paul Moritz, Werner on there. I mean, you got the rock stars, yeah. but you know the word business value. 
was like popped right in the center there. So, you know, any any startup that uh, that can get business value quick, but that's the promise of the cloud. That's what you guys are trying to set up with Pivotal. Yeah. Well, you know what's so funny is when I started as a, a venture guy 12 years ago, conventional wisdom was if you're going to build a software company, you need like 30 million dollars, right? So you just run the math and you say to yourself, $30 million, I mean, what do you have to sell that company yeah. for for a VC to get a 10X, <laughs> right? I mean, you have to sell that company, you know, for, I mean, you know, $200 million yeah, or something, yeah, you know right. what I mean? How many companies sell for 200 million or more? So, I mean, today, the beauty of it is, I think you can do that same thing for a third the cost. I mean, probably for $10 million, you can build a very sophisticated software company and- And sell for a billion. And sell for a <laughs> billion, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> can I get into it? I want to get into that deal. <laughs> yeah, we have a- we'll You didn't do you. the nice era deal? <laughs> 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 we'll show you the deals after. We have a great pipeline right now. So, so we were talking earlier about so. <laughs> I love it. Deal <laughs> flow. <laughs> the cube, we're turning into an M&A machine exactly. too. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, well, I am a deal junkie. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking earlier about how you guys brought these assets together. What I loved about the Pivotal deal is when you when, when we first heard about the Pivotal initiative, it was like, okay, another big data platform, and Palmer is behind it, so that's a, that's a plus. But when you announced the GE component of it, then the light bulbs went off, because <clears throat> really nobody was hardcore talking about that next wave. Yeah. Right, so with all these pieces together and with the GE announcement, and given your corp dev role, how much of your activity in, in, in new investments goes toward that industrial internet versus you know the old sort of make Hadoop enterprise ready type of thing? Can you talk about that yeah, a little bit? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think you know we're going to have to invest in in a variety of areas. I mean, we're clearly committed to, to GE and com committed to this industrial internet, and, and a lot of our engineering and work right mm -hmm. now is focused on that. But at the same time, you know, we have customers in telecommunications, we have, you know, customers, you know, that are in the internet, you know, we have financial customers services, financial services. Right. So, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're a platform company, you have to be able to support all the key markets. And so we have to kind of invest across all of them. And, you know, one of the things we're spending a lot of time working on at Pivotal is figuring out who the key companies are in those verticals and talking to them about leveraging our platform, giving them the value proposition about why they don't need to build out this infrastructure. They can use our infrastructure. They can build the logic for their application and we can go to market together. So I think you'll see us with a variety of relationships, maybe not as deep as GE, but certainly many relationships in a set of key verticals to demonstrate the value of the Pitival One platform. So you talked about uh, the capital markets, the sentiment right now. I presume your criteria are somewhat different. Um, maybe you're looking for guys who can't market or can't sell or don't have traction but have great tech, but maybe talk about that a little bit. What do you look for in investment? Well, I mean, you know, we, we, we invest basically, you know, through EMC Ventures. Yep. And so, you know, EMC Ventures has got, like all sort of strategic venture groups, has that dual responsibility of investing in things that are strategic to the core businesses, you know, which is obviously EMC and Pivotal and to some degree VMware. Um, sure. And then also, obviously, um, it has to be a good financial return. Because at the end of the are day, are you in EMC Ventures, or you you have Mission Ventures, right? Wasn't yeah, that your yeah. Mission Ventures was is the, is the venture fund that I you know I'm currently a partner of, but you know we're kind of I, I've joined basically, Pivotal. Yeah. So in my Pivotal role, if we do investments, we'll do those investments. You tap that through EMC Ventures. EMC Ventures. Okay. And Mission is not making new investments. Got it. Okay. So got it. Okay. basically, it's really you know the new investments would be done in partnership. So with how low? What's team. the smallest deal you've done? Just to, from a strategic, if you see something strategic. How low have you gone? Y in terms of EMC Ventures, I yeah. mean they've invested you know half a million dollars. You know, they've invested, you know, up to tens of millions of dollars. So it's yeah. sort of the gamut. Yeah, I mean, so it if it's strategic, they can go for it, get a look at it, yeah. keep, a look, keep looking. Yeah. Do they lead or just mostly follow? I mean, they've, they've led some, but they do very much like to work with uh, financial, you know, traditional venture guys because, you know, they, they yeah. obviously have a limited number of resources. And so working with, you know, sort of a local venture person is, is the preferred path. Mm -hmm. And so, and they're very active. I mean, do you, you know, make decisions at EMC, you refer. Uh, we we basically at the end of they the, have the Intel Capital guy there from yeah so Scott Darling is a very Scott good friend Dar it's kind of funny we've been okay. known each other for a long time and and you know he'd be a great guy by the way to to have on the queue because yeah. he's just grown his team substantially so he's got now five really experienced VCs who are working with him and they're aggressively going to market and looking for they're still for on Calper and Palo Alto yep they're still on Calper and Palo Alto we'll have to come down and do a visit come down and do it with Scott him. Darling if you're watching or anyone knows Scott. Ping them, we're coming He's down there right now. Awesome <laughs> guy. But we work very closely with them. At the yeah. end of the day, they make the decision as a partnership, but they're influenced by the business units like Pivotal or yeah, you know, yeah. EMC, et cetera. Well, you yeah. identify the need too. You know, the, yeah. the white space that you have, Joe calls them tuck-ins. Right. right. You guys are big on tuck-ins. We are. So I think it's, uh, 
really underscored some of the prowess that you guys have in, in acquisitions. I mean, you guys, IBM, Oracle, probably, you know, top three in the in the enterprise tech business. Yeah, and, I, and you know, Joe and David Gould, and I mean, they're, you know, and Paul and, and Pat, they're all really good at keeping the people, right? I mean, no, they're, they're yeah. phenomenal I mean, execution. Look at look Scott Yara is still here, Bill Cook is still here, Rob Mee is here. I mean, yeah. you can go down, uh, you guys know the EMC. Yeah. I mean, they've done a great job. They've built a culture that's really about exceeding customers' expectations. They treat their employees great. They reward they're the executives. They, they reward the, they reward the executives we call tech athletes, and, and that's why they stay, because the environment is conducive for execution. Yeah, they're great. And, and this, you know, so the people who perform stay, yeah. because they get that emotional benefit. And well, plus, cool. I think they're winners, right? And people yeah. want to be in a winning team. Yeah. The EMC's got a winning team, there's no and question about and it. And they're fun. I mean, they're actually really <laughs> fun guys to go <laughs> hang out with, you know? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Okay, well, Leo, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. What you've done um, has been fantastic and really historic. If you look at what's happening in the industry, uh, it's been fun to watch you, you guys and you guys behind the scenes because we can kind of see the tea leaves being kind of you know, shuffled around uh, over the past two years. It's been fun to watch and certainly since 2010, since we've been doing theCUBE at VMworld, it's been exciting to see. And now that you have decoupled but highly cohesive operations in VMware and Pivotal, I think we'll see a lot more action. We're looking forward to chatting more and, and hearing more about uh, your M&A strategy and your corp dev moves. So uh, thanks for coming on, really thanks. appreciate it. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with a wrap up after this short break. <laughs>